te technical difficulties, can you just please type, type in the chat box and let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just waiting for a response to know if you guys can hear me. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. You know, I'm not sure what part you hit, you heard or that you didn't hear, but again, welcome to this Remnant Community Church broadcast. And you know, I'm just going to go ahead and read our scripture again today in your hearing. It's coming from Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1, and then I'm going to skip over to verse 16 through 26, verse number 1. And it reads, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things of this manner. Which basically means this is not an exhaustive lift of those things that don't bring glory to God. So we as children of God, we must be intentional just to make sure we guard our lives. It continues to say, I warn you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. A good such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. But if we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I'm not going to go. I'm sorry. I'm going to go now and open us up in a word of prayer trusting in the faithfulness of God. And I also just want to put out a quick reminder to remember that today is first Sunday. So we will be taking communion at our round table. We will be taking communion at our round table. So please uh, gather your elements to join us at that time. And also take some notes during the preached word. So when we go to the round table, you can actively engage us in dialogue, actively engage us in dialogue. Again, we're gonna go to God in prayer. Just trusting in the sovereignty of God, trusting in the will of God. And we're not going just only considering ourselves, but we're just going to consider those who stand in the need of prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God, we just thank you. We praise you. We stand in awe of who you are, for you are high and lifted up. And besides you, there is none other, Father God. God, we, we acknowledge you as the great I am. We acknowledge you as Jehovah God. You are our strong tower. You are our defense, our provider, our way maker, our deliverer, our redeemer, Father God, the lover of our soul. So we press into your presence on this wonderful Sunday morning. Deeming it a privilege, God, it is our honor to come before such a great God, huh? A holy God, a righteous and faithful and just God, a forgiving God. So we come, Father God, laying all of us at your feet, bowing and breaking our will that your will will be manifested in our lives, Father God. Father, we come just celebrating you just for being God. We come just lifting your name on high, magnifying you because you are God all by yourself. We cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God who was and is and is to come. Oh, we just stand in awe of you this morning. God, we love you this morning. We worship you not only with the fruit of our lips, but with our entire being. The way we live our lives before you, God. It is truly our desire, your called out body, to bring glory to your name, Father God. To lift you on high. To truly worship you in spirit and in truth, 
Father God, to worship you according to your written word, Father, to worship you as we're led by the power of your spirit. Oh, we mean it this morning, God. Oh, how we love you, Father God. Father God, we come into your presence, understanding that we serve a God who is not removed from the issues of our life. We serve an all-seeing and all-knowing God. So our coming to you in prayer is an act of our faith. God, this is us telling you how much we do rely on you for everything that takes place in our life. For every moment, God, we are relying on your strength, your power, and your ability in us, Father God. But Father God, as we're coming, we're coming confessing that we have not done it all right. We come confessing, God, that there have been moments, you know, since our last encounter with you, but we've stepped outside of your will, when we have not walked or obeyed the, the leading of the Spirit in our life, that we chose to do things our own way, and we did not acknowledge you, Father. And for that, God, we are sorry. We come confessing, confessing, Father God, that there were times that we heard you speaking by the unction of your spirit and we chose to ignore you, Father God. There are times, Father God, when we were able to help or to, to minister your, your gospel, Father God, but we, we chose to shut our mouths, Father God. There were times, God, where we could have been a physical help to somebody, but we chose, God, to just only consider ourselves, God, and withhold our bowels of compassion. And for that, we are sorry. There were times, God, when we did not walk in faith, when we allowed fear to grip our hearts, Father God. When we listened, God, to the voice of the enemy instead of saying, but thus saith the Lord. And for that, we are sorry, Father God. Father, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus that you continue, God, to renew a right spirit within us that we may yield even the more to the leading of your Holy Spirit because we truly desire sanctification, Father. We truly desire to be pleasing in your sight. We truly desire for the word of God to be active and alive in our lives. But God, we just need your help right now. We need you, God, in every area of our life. We need your peace to rest upon us, Father God. We need your reassurance, God, to be evident in our life that we would just trust you with everything, Father. So, Father God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that as we're coming to you, that you will continue, God, to allow your spirit to perfect those things in us that don't align with who you are, that don't align with the truth of your word. Father God, even in those times where we struggle just to pick up the word of God, help us because we truly need you. Cause your word, God, to be illuminated in our hearts, our minds, and our understanding, Father God. God, we will do the work of learning, but help us because we need you. Have your way in the name of Jesus. We know, God, that it is truly your desire that we get understanding. So we're asking you right now for the wisdom of God as it comes to studying your word and be intentional to live it out. Oh, we need you, God. We can't do this thing all by ourselves, Father God. We need your spirit to lead and guide us every waking moment of the day, Father. So we press, we press, we press, Father God. Father, we thank you, God, that through the power of your word, that you continue to reveal those things in us that don't align with truth. Those things, God, those areas that we continue to wrestle, that we fight to lay before you. God, we're asking right now, God, that you continue to purge and perfect us in the name of Jesus. Because we truly want to be meek for your use. We want to be the ones, God, that you can call on in a moment's notice to do your bidding here in the earth. We, we want to be the ones, God, that let our light so shine before men that they will glorify our heavenly Father. We, we want to be the tools, God, in your hand. So help us, Father God. Help us like only you can. God, when we come just casting all of our cares at your feet, we know, God, that you are the remedy. You are the solution to it all. 
So all the issues of our life, God, you already know them. You know them in and out. You know them better than we do. So we cast it at your feet, God, and you even know our desires. You know, you know, God, what we stand in need of. You know some of us are in need of a healing, Father God, whether it's a mental, a physical, a psychological, emotional healing. We need you, Father. We need your touch this morning. Some of us are in need of financial healing, Father God. We we're praying, God, for your wisdom, Father God, that we would be good stewards over all the resources that you allow to flow our way, Father God. Some of us are in need of healing in our relationships, Father God. God, do what only you can do to mend hearts, Father God, to cause us to walk in unity and brotherly love, Father God. Show us what it really looks like to forgive, Father God. Oh, we need you, God, in every area of our life. We're struggling in this thing and that thing, but again, God, we know that you are the remedy. So we cast it all at your feet right now. We continue, God, to lift up those who do not know you in the part of their sin, that you have warriors on, on the ground, Father God, who are standing firm in the gospel of Jesus Christ and who are not ashamed, Father God. But those, God, who are speaking the truth of God in the spirit of love, those who are tender, God, with your word and even with your people, Father God, to minister grace, minister with the heart of love and compassion, but still standing firm on the truth of your word. So God, we're praying for them right now, but we're praying for the hearers that their hearts will be made tender, that understanding God will be made clear, Father God, that they will not be dull of hearing. By your spirit, allow your word to penetrate, God, the hearts of men, the heart hardness of men. Oh, we thank you, God, because we know, God, that it's not your desire that any should perish. So we're praying, God, for the ones who are standing to deliver your word with truth and compassion. But we're praying, God, equally, God, for the hearer of your word, that they will receive it with grace. Yield, Father, and cry out, what must they do to be saved? It's by your spirit, God, that we know that all these things happen. By your design, your, your divine sovereignty, by your will, Father God. And we're trusting in you right now. We continue to lift up those in more battered countries, Father God. We, we, we continue to lift up the people of Ukraine. We continue to lift up the people of Russia, Father God. We continue, God, to lift up leadership, worldly leadership all over the world. God, we know that you have purpose for what you allow, so we're just trusting in your sovereignty. We will continue to stand on your word and asking, God, that not our will, but thy will be done in all things. Because we know that your will is what's best. Your, your, your will is what's going to take place to divine, God, your ultimate end. So we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up spiritual leaders all over. God, the time is drawing nigh. The battle, the spiritual warfare is real and we know it to be so. So we're asking for their divine protection right now as they walk before you, Father God. As they're standing to declare your unadulterated word that you will protect them, Father, that you will keep them, that they will not operate in fear, but they will operate in boldness, Father God, and just trust you for every hand, Father God. Oh, we just thank you right now. We even lift up our own pastor, Pastor Glassby, this morning. We thank you, God, for allowing him to be a preacher of the gospel, celebrating 23 years. We're praying, God, that you continue to increase him in knowledge and understanding and wisdom as it relates to your scriptures, Father God. Continue, God, to give him a heart of love for your people, Father God. Don't allow him, God, to be distracted by what he sees in the natural, but just trust your hand, Father, through it all. Because we know that you are the one that will continue to open up doors on his behalf, that your name will be glorified. Protect and keep him, God. Keep his mind stayed on you, Father God. Protect everything, God, that concerns him, that he will be focused even the more on the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and leading people to the, to you, Father God. Have your way in this worship service, God. Even with these technical difficulties, don't allow us to be distracted, to take our focus off of you. 
have your way, Father God, as we are intentional. This Remnant Community Church body of believers are intentional to worship you on this Sunday morning. Have your way in these and all things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I am going to hop right out your way. I just, again, want to remind you to go ahead and take wonderful notes that you may join us at the 1015 hour for our roundtable discussion. And also remember that we will be taking communion today at the roundtable. So until then, God bless you. Continue to pray for Pastor Glassby. And let me just ask if you could just do us this one favor. In the chat box, say happy anniversary. Again, this is Pastor Glassby's 23rd year of standing firm on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. Once again, we are glad, amen, to be found in uh, the presence of the Lord, in the presence of his people, amen. We're excited um, for this is the day that the Lord has made, amen. We are to in rejoice and be glad in it, amen. I'm excited, amen, this morning to see all the names and faces come across the screen, amen. So we praise God for amen uh, uh, certainly we praise God our Father and certainly Christ our Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit amen and amen we praise God this morning for Minister First Lady Tracy amen uh, for bringing us up to this point amen we have a couple of challenges on early on amen uh, technical amen she was on point doing what she does amen but uh, the technical difficulties amen and so we prolong just a bit but we praise God for her efforts and all that she does amen for bringing us the scripture and the prayer and the word uh, amen of exaltation and instruction amen and always amen bringing it with excellence and we praise God for her we praise God for minister uh, um, Tina Latisha, amen. She's working behind the scenes, amen. Saw something wrong and, and amen. Jumped on it, amen, to make sure that we get where we need to get and amen. Consistently, consistently doing this, amen, for the sake of ministry. And we praise God for her. We thank and praise God for each and every one of uh, those who come to visit with us from time to time and share in, amen, this event with us, amen. Uh, and we certainly praise God, uh, amen, for those who make up the remnant, uh, community church family. We praise God, amen, for all of your greetings and all of your expressions of love, amen, and your dedication and commitment to the cause of Christ, amen. And so we're just praising God uh, this morning. I know we got to move uh, on, but I do, I do, I do want to uh, praise God for uh, Tiffany this morning. I do want to praise God for Deaconess Penn and Deacon Penn. I do want to praise God, amen, for uh, Sister Marlo, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Misa, yeah, Misa, I see you in here. God bless you this morning. Amen. As well as Sister Renita. Amen. I saw a couple of people up front saying, uh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. So we praise God for that type of interaction. That lets us know that you didn't just hit the button, turn it on, and then walk away and do whatever it is uh, that folk do this time of day. Amen. And so we praise God uh, for your attention uh, to uh, this. Thank you, Sister Rosa. God bless you this morning. Thank you, Sister Helen. God bless you. Uh, this morning and sister candy amen you all are on board no brother Ed, i wasn't gonna miss you i see you this morning god bless you as well as sister melody god bless you this morning amen we've been having technical difficulties all morning long amen before this even started amen but we praise god uh, that he brings us where we are to be thank you for your prayers uh sister louise and deacon uh bill god bless you both amen i had to move uh brother gary, gary yeah we see you brother gary god bless you this morning i gotta move uh into this lesson this morning amen uh which is almost a pickup 
from last Sunday. Amen. And so uh, in our hearing, uh, thank you, Sister Jean. I see you. God bless you this morning. Uh, turn our attention to uh, the book of Psalm again. Uh, and this time, let's go to uh, chapter 150. Psalm 150. Amen. In our hearing. And we will move. Uh, amen. Accordingly. Hey, Chanel. All right. God bless you this morning. Amen. We're looking forward uh, uh, to um, what you have. Amen. To offer us as well. I saw Ashley. God bless you this morning. Amen. Psalm 150, starting at verse number one. This is going to be uh, quick. But again, as uh, 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 First Lady said, take some notes, amen, and so you can bring some more to uh, the round table, as well as those who got on late, please get your uh, uh, elements together for the communion that we'll be sharing in uh, this morning as well. Psalm 150, starting at verse number one, the King James Version uh, says, praise ye the Lord, mm -hmm. praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Uh, praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Here it is. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Uh, praise ye the Lord. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Our Father and God, we show thank you this morning. We praise you. We glorify and magnify you. Uh, God, we thank you this morning for, for causing us first to be, because we know that it is you uh, that, uh, uh, that causes us to breathe and, and move and to have our being. And so we thank you for life. We thank you for reasonable health and strength, God. We thank you for minds and hearts that want to serve you. We thank you for minds and hearts that want to hear from you, God. And so on today, we pray that you would uh, continue to enlighten us, continue to open the eyes of our understanding and knowledge and in wisdom. God, we pray right now that you would continue to, God, to, to show us, to teach us, uh, to number our days, that we apply our hearts unto wisdom. We thank you and praise you for all things in Jesus' name. And God, as you know, I really do need you. Amen and amen. All right. As we move through uh, this book, uh, our brother uh, Ronald, this is a continuation, amen, of what we talked about on last week. Uh, we went into the book of Psalms and we talked about uh, the book of Psalms being a compilation of prayers and poems, uh, a amen, uh, that were put together, amen, uh, from folk from all, a amen, uh, areas and walks of life, amen, and, and it talked about, a amen, the acknowledgement Acknowledging of God, amen, as omnipotent and acknowledging us as frail. Uh, we talked about uh, ca categorically uh, seven genres of uh, psalms, well, literary genres anyway. Uh, of course, there are so many other genres, but literary genres, there's only seven, a amen, and we named them. I'll run it off real quick. Hymns, laments, thanksgiving, confidence, royal prayers, kingship, enthronement, and wisdom. And we said that these seven genres would literally cover every area of the believer's life. Whatever state you are in life, whatever mode you are in life, whatever season you're in, uh, you will be found in one or so of these uh, songs. Because there are some dual songs, amen, that, that deal with uh, areas of our lives. Rather, we are going through a storm or having a mountaintop experience, amen. We can all, we can find that uh, in a few psalms, amen, uh, together. So psalms follow our lives. It speaks of our lives because our predecessors, our ancestors, if you will, amen, experience this firsthand, amen, and, and, and being, amen, that we are in somewhat of a revolving door, amen, especially in uh, today's society, we find ourselves in some of the same circumstances 
and situations, amen, that they did. I went around telling folk a little while ago uh, that the devil ain't got no new tricks, amen. He's been using the same five tricks on us since day the day began. Uh, he uses, yes, you're right, our five senses when we see something, when we hear something, when we smell something, when we feel something, when we taste something, amen, uh, uh, it, it, it produces in us, amen, a sense, amen, and a responsibility, watch this, to react, to respond. So Psalms, amen, was the book of prayers in ancient Israel. And, 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 and these were collected for worship, really, worship in the temple. Did, did you know that, that, that you could have a testimony uh, that someone else can hear, watch this, and it would spark worship in them because then it would spark hope. And that's why folk can overcome uh, by the word of your testimony because of the fact that you've testified and here you are have come through and so now it sparked hope in them that look if God can bring him through if God can bring her through he can also bring me through so so some uh, psalms were uh, uh, expressions of personal devotion while others uh, were corporate they were comprised or composed as songs for public worship I remember uh, quoting John MacArthur John MacArthur said that the basic theme of psalms is living life on earth where two uh, dimensions operate simultaneously he talked about the horizontal uh, uh, or the temporal uh, reality that is God watch this looking over us uh, at all times and then he talked about the vertical or transcendent reality where the spirit watch this is working in us and our role as believers watch this is to live in the joy of the Lord without denying the pain of earthly circumstances uh, it's sort of like the book of James uh, where James says count it all joy uh, when you fall into Dyer's temptations, let me stop right there. Let me back up because he wasn't talking to everybody because everybody won't understand that. He said, my brethren, <laughs> count it all joy when you fall into Dyer's temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen and amen. So last week, we talked about introducing your problems to your praise. Amen. Uh, on this week, uh, we want to talk about uh, praise that gets God's attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about last week uh, introducing our problems to our praise. And, and, and in that, we agreed that that Psalm 100 was a universal decree, right? Uh, that means uh, just because of the fact that you were created, you owe God praise. I hope somebody is on board here. Uh, 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 that means it didn't matter of our status. It didn't matter if we were rich or poor. Uh, uh, we owed God praise. It doesn't matter if we were healthy or sick in the body. We still owe God praise. It didn't matter if we were happy or sad. We still owe God praise. It didn't matter if we were house poor or homeless. We still owe God praise. Pray. As a matter of fact, we went on to say it didn't matter if you was a business owner or unemployed, you still owe God praise. Secondly, uh, we also noted uh, that we owe God untainted devotion. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember that? Uh, untainted devotion, which is our worship unto God. It is what we offer God. It is our lifestyle. It is our very life. And untainted devotion, it realizes, amen, uh, that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And so, so since I am un since I am spotless in front of you don't mean that I have untainted devotion because God sees me when you can't see me. <laughs> Am I making sense here on today? Uh, so, so we need to live life. Watch this. Cognizant of uh, the fact that not only are people watching us from time to time and we escape them, but God is watching in whom's eyesight we cannot 
escape. And so it is our offering unto God. And whatever we offer God has to be just. Whatever we offer God has to be sincere. Whatever we offer God has to be honest. Whatever we offer God has to be pure. Whatever we uh, uh, offer God has to be pleasing. Whatever we offer God has to be holy. Thirdly, uh, we uh, say that we are to seek to understand his deity, mm -hmm. uh, his deity, which is his divine status. It is his divine qualities. It is his divine nature. Uh, we talked about the Westminster's Catechism uh, teaching that God is an infinite, holy and intelligent spirit, the maker and supreme ruler of heaven and earth. Y'all don't know how long ago I did that catechism. In other words, he is not on our level. Watch this. And we will never be on his. That, I'm talking about even when we leave, you know, when our earthen tabernacles are, are dissolved uh, and we have a house uh, with God not made with hands, we still won't be like him. And, and, and it don't matter your gifts and talents while you're here on earth. You are not like God. Bring yourself down. I, I know you speak in tongues and I know you're known as a prophet and I know you got long tenure as a pastor. Uh, uh, I know uh, that you are a bishop now, but God is above us all. And we need to understand that. Uh, Solomon talked about understanding in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. He said, he said, wisdom, yeah, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all of thy getting, he said, get wisdom understanding. See, if we are to understand God's deity, uh, we need to find ourselves, watch this, in God's word. Now, you know, it's nowhere in the world I'm going to stand here and not talk about Jesus and not talk about the word of God. He says that we need to find ourselves in the word of God. Hebrews 4 and 12 says the word of God is quick, that's alive, and powerful, that's operating, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And, and so since that's the case, uh, uh, the, the writer in Psalms 119, 34 and 35 says, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statue, and, and I will keep it until the end. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yes, I, I will observe it with my whole heart. Did I mention in Psalms 119, 105, uh, the writer says that your word, God, it is a light to my path. It, it is a very lamp unto my feet. Did I tell you that in John 1 and 1, the scripture teaches us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God. In other words, the more word we have on the inside of us, the better we will appreciate who God is. And then lastly, we noted that God is an unchangeable deliverer. I know some people were here on this uh, because in that fifth verse of that Psalm 100 that we read, for the Lord is good. Remember that? His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generation. Uh, uh, we agreed, amen, that he an unchangeable deliverer. I always quote Moses in Psalm 90 which says, Lord thou have been our dwelling place listen, in all generations before the mountains were brought forth forever have thou formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. What is Moses saying there? He says God has a proven record he's an unchangeable deliverer uh, what makes us think, hey, hey, amen that just because we are moving and progressive uh, in this century, uh, that, that God's morals are being redefined. Uh, God is not going to change uh, uh, regardless what else changes. Hebrews 13 and 8 said Jesus is the same yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forever. Uh, Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast, watch, the profession of our faith uh, without wavering. Watch this. Uh, 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 for he he is faithful that promise. If there's going to be one in this world, in this universe that is true, that is consistent, it's going to be God. 
Uh, Thomas Ken, some of y'all might uh, know him, uh, born uh, in July of 1637. Uh, he died on March uh, 19th in 1711. He, he was an English cleric who was considered uh, the most eminent of English non-juring uh, bishops, rather. And he was appointed by uh, uh, Charles II as chaplain. Thomas Ken, keep that name, because some of y'all already know him and didn't know that you know him. Not only was he a chaplain, but he was also a famous writer. Mm -hmm. uh, of, of great notability, his infamous book of prayers. Uh, uh, he had a morning prayer, he had an evening prayer, and then he had an, a midnight prayer. Now, the most popular of the three, as we already know, was that evening hymn or evening prayer where he says, all praise to thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light. Keep me, keep me, King of Kings, beneath thine own almighty wings. Uh, forgive me, Lord, for thy dear son, uh, the ill that I this day have done, uh, that with the world, my life, myself and thee, I err, I sleep at peace, may be. Listen, uh, teach me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may rise glorious, there it is, at the judgment day. L a little more. Oh, my soul uh, uh, on uh, thee repose and with sweet sleep my eyelids close. Sleep uh, uh, that I may more vigorous wake to serve my God when I I awake, huh? You want me to do the last one? Okay, I'll do it. When at night I sleepless lie, my soul with heavenly thoughts supply, uh, let no ill dream disturb my rest, uh, no powers of darkness uh, uh, me uh, molest. I like that. Oh, when shall I in endless day forever chase dark sleep away and hymns divine with angels sing all praise to thee, eternal king. Listen, and, and, and his songs uh, were divine, but watch this. They were done in private because in that day, uh, any songs that were sung to God, watch this, had to be scripture uh, verbatim. Y'all got to look this up now. Uh, but the students there, the, the boys at Winchester, happened to be heard, or uh, overheard rather, singing one of the songs in public. And the truth of the matter is, that song got published, and we've been singing it in churches ever since. It, it, it is praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now, now some of the more contemporary churches have moved on away uh, from it, but you can still hear this in thousands of thousands of churches uh, across this land uh, today. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, now, 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 what makes this hymn uh, so great? Uh, it, it, it's so great because it points directly to God and God alone. Now, without question, uh, this psalm at hand is considered of the genres to be a hymn psalm because uh, through its uh, very uh, melodious structure, alliteration, it is said to trigger uh, a neurotransmitters and bring about joy even in people that were uh, depressed. One writer said that such endorphins were, was our personal narcotic. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's why some of the seniors tried to tell us back in the day, amen, to get yourself a favorite song. It's, it, it's like medicine, amen, to your soul. And, and truthfully and rightfully so, because it aligns, amen, with the scripture. Now I'm going to the verses here and get on out the way. Look at the verse here. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Verse one has three parts. He says first, praise. Mm -hmm. Praise is a, uh, comes from the Hebrew word hallelujah. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is uh, halal uh, jah. 
That's what it is. And, and it's really two words. It means to celebrate God. Mm -hmm. See, hallelujah is not just something uh, that we're supposed to say. It is more importantly something we actually supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, folks say hallelujah as an expression, but the truth of the matter is it is better a man performed than said. It, uh, it is us, watch this, have made up our mind that we are going to celebrate God. Look, this is not just a group of people yelling and making noise, but it is an intentional celebration to God. It is praising God. Uh, uh, see, praising God is like throwing him a party. And, and, and a praise uh, uh, should be uh, to that magnitude every single time. He says, watch this, praise ye the Lord. Now, I got to get this right now. Uh, when he said ye, he, he, he's really saying you do it. Uh, who is he talking to? He's talking to each and every one of us. He says, praise ye the Lord. Look, Look at Psalms 145, verse 5 and 6. He says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible, that is awesome acts, and I will declare thy greatness. He says, praise ye the Lord. That means each and every one of us has a personal responsibility to praise God. Now, this ain't going to be a whole lot of preaching. I'm just going to be talking uh, uh, today. Then he said, praise him where? In the sanctuary. Now, sanctuary, a, a man, uh, watch this. In Psalms 148, uh, verse number seven, it, it shows us a picture of the sanctuary. It says, praise the Lord. Uh, from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, uh, a fire and hell, snow and vapor, stormy uh, wind, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and, and flying fowl, kings of the earth and, and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise, there it is, the name of the Lord for his name alone is excellent and his glory is above uh, the earth and heaven. We ought to praise God in his sanctuary. God's sanctuary, watch this, is wherever God is. And the truth of the matter is he's omnipresent. He's every single place that we can name uh, above the earth, he says, and even in heaven. And so we ought to be praising him. But also it says uh, uh, praise him in the firmament. Now firmament uh, itself is really just uh, referring to heaven. Genesis 1 and 8 said, and, and God called called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Your praise, watch this, watch this closely, your praise should always seek to reach heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Our praise need not stop at the applause of men. See, we, 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 we've been stopping our praise once we get a great applause, but our praise ought to always seek uh, a man to reach heaven. Let me move. Uh, he says, praise him for his mighty acts, verse 2. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Uh, there it is. Uh, this, this, this past Sunday, we, we talked about his goodness and we talked about his greatness. We say that he was matchless. Remember this in Deuteronomy uh, 324? Oh, Lord God. Thou hast begun, there it is, to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty, mighty hand for what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy words and according to thy might. He is matchless. Uh, uh, now, now, which of you out here, uh, amen, online, uh, amen, have a hard time thinking of something that God has done for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not going to be a lot, amen. Yet, we don't praise God as if he's matchless. Uh, we, we, we used to sing uh, this song, and, and it was real, uh, whether everybody believed it or not. We used to say, can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord. But the truth of the matter is that sentiment has somewhat faded. And, and, and the psalmist is trying to get our attention back to there's nobody like God. I, I know how much you love your parents. I know how much you love your spouse. I know how much you love your children. But ain't nobody like God. God 
is in a class all by himself and, and every single time he's going to prove it. Let me move because my time is fleeing here. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Uh, what that is, that's a loud praise. Anybody got a loud praise? Uh, uh, Fred Hammond got a loud praise. A amen. But then he talked about praise him with the psaltery and harp. That, that's a soft praise. A amen. Jeff Majors is somebody uh, who got a softer uh, praise. Uh, uh, but the truth of the matter is there's time for both of these praises. There, there's a time for a lot of energy, which uh, ought to be the plan of every born again believer. Then there's a time for a quiet chant which will cause us to reflect on the goodness of the Lord. Uh, again, we need to prepare prior to even getting anywhere near the worship experience. Before we click that button to go online, we ought to be prepared, amen, for a praise. Rather, it's a loud praise or a soft praise. Rather, we're in the church house or, amen, in our own homes watching online. We ought to be ready to have a praise party. I remember in Psalms 122, uh, the writer said, I was glad. <laughs> Anybody ever been glad? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let me move. Praise him with the timbrel. Everybody know what timbrel is? You're right. That's a drum and dance. In 2 Samuel 6.14, uh, the writer said, and David danced before the Lord with all his might and and David was girded with a linen ephod. Look, 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 David danced so hard that he danced right out of his clothes. Uh, you, you, you know, when, when you celebrate God like that, folk will literally get upset with you because they don't understand, here it is, your praise timing. See, uh, folk think that there's a certain time uh, to praise God, but no, uh, they got upset with David because they didn't understand his praise timing. Uh, you, you, you up here dancing and praising God while people think you should be crying. You up here dancing and praising God while people think you ought to be moping. You up here dancing and praising God while people think you ought to be depressed. You celebrate so hard, you're getting folk upset. They're mad at you. Why are you acting such a fool right now? You just lost a loved one. Why are you acting a fool right now? You just lost a job. Why are you praising God? He has not even answered your prayer yet. And here you are making all this noise. Well, if you look at verse number 20 to 22 in that same chapter of 2 Samuel, uh, you will see 2 Samuel chapter, chapter 6, you'll see then David Return, watch this, to bless his household. And, and Michael, uh, the daughter of Saul, which happened to be David's wife, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself uh, today in the eyes of the maid servant, uh, in the handmaid of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. Watch this, verse 21. And David said uh, to his wife, Michael, uh, 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 it, it was before the Lord uh, which, which chose me, watch this, before your father Saul and, and before all his house and appointed me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play before the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 22 says, and, and I will yet be more vile than thus and, and will be base in my own sight uh, and, and, and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, uh, of them shall I be had in honor. Oh, what a great answer. He said, they're going to realize that my radical praise is my response to what great things God has already done for me. So, 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 so if you think that was something, you ain't seen nothing yet. Even when nobody else joins in, I'm going to praise them. Even when there's no music around, I'm going to praise them. Even when I can't see my weight, I'm going to praise them. Even when folk walk away, I'm going to praise them. Even when you say and think, it don't take all that. I'm 
still going to praise him because I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. And even when my testimony couldn't be adequately articulated, I'm going to say it with my praise because sometimes I can't even think of the words of how good God has been. Sometimes I can't adequately articulate what I'm really trying to say. So I just move. I just wave my hand. I just stop my feet. I just shake in the Lord because the truth of the matter is my praise is speaking for me. Anybody out there got a praise like that? That folk know what you're going through. They know what you're dealing with and you ain't really got the words but you just start with a dance. You just start with a shout. You just crack up a song because the truth of the matter is that praise has been bubbling up on the inside of you because you were created to praise. You were created to worship. So it's got to come out. Let me close this thing on out. Praise him with string instruments and organs. That's self-explanatory. Brother Ed, he said praise him with a good time. And it don't matter if you play one song on one string, just praise him. He said praise him uh, with the piano, with the keyboard, with the organ. It don't matter if you play every song uh, on two keys with two fingers like chopsticks, but still praise him. If you mean to glorify God and edify the people of God, it, it, it is a joyful noise unto the Lord. I got to close. Verse number five says praise him. Upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Uh, th th this is uh, just saying your praise to God is not meant to be a secret. Anybody heard me say that? I gotta say it. Your praise is not meant to be a secret. Now, no, though it is personal, it shouldn't be private. Y'all can coin that if you want. Though my praise is personal, it should not be private. It should be a public display. I know I said that your praise can be loud or soft, but in order for it to be praise, it has to be displayed. Worship, see, can be done in public or in private. Worship is the bowing of your will. Worship is your lifestyle. Worship is how you show God how much you love and appreciate him. So worship can be done in private or in public, but praise Praise. praise is always public. Praise is always you telling somebody, showing somebody about the goodness of your God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Praise is you literally bragging about how good God is. That's why in Psalm 34, David talked about bragging. In verse number three, he said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And then verse two, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Let me close. Last thing. Who's supposed to be doing all this praising? He said, verse 6, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Now, what is he saying here? Let everything and everybody who has a reason to praise God do so. So the question is, who has a reason to even praise God? Well, John 3.16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And if that was not enough, it is recorded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 14. If we, for if we believe that Jesus died, there it is, and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, verse 17, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. If that won't make you praise him, then nothing will. I challenge us today to make praise part of your daily diet. It's one nutrient that is sure to fortify your spiritual growth. See, for by praise, we grow. Praise makes you want to grow in knowledge. Praise makes you want to grow in wisdom. Praise makes you want to grow in understanding. Praise makes you want to grow in your grip, in your gifts. Praise makes you want to grow in your relationship with the saints. Praise makes you want to grow in your relationship with God. Praise gets you ready for heaven. Because when we get to heaven, we will only have one duty. We will only have one job. Our vocation will be sure in heaven. All we need to do in heaven is to praise God. And so we may as well get our practice in now. God bless you is our prayer. Look, meet us over at the round table because I want to talk about this praise. What, what has been stopping us from praising God uh, or, or really giving God a praise? Watch this. That, 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 that gets his attention because some of the noise that we make ain't really getting God's attention. But, but how do we praise God and get his attention? God bless you is our prayer. <laughs>